My name is Beth McBall. If you missed the beginning of the presentation, I was the Civil Rights Attorney for CARE back in 2013 to 2015, but before I took some time off to take care of my kids. I'm now the Immigrants' Rights Attorney, um, but I'm so happy to be presenting a Know Your Rights presentation on religious accommodations for incarcerees during Ramadan. Um, just really quickly, uh, there's a little disclaimer, the material covered in this presentation is intended to educate and does not constitute legal advice. Uh, viewers should not act on the information provided without seeking any professional legal counsel. Neither transmission nor receipt of these materials creates an attorney-client relationship between the author and the receiver. And basically, this is just to let you know that we'd love to hear from you personally um, about your personal situation. Please visit the Keras FBA website. In the corner, there is a little report and incident button that you can use in case you need more information about uh, how to help a particular person that you have in mind, whether they're incarcerated or not. Um, we have some more Know Your Rights presentations coming up this week, um, so do check them out. Um, and this is just a small, short presentation, especially with Ramadan coming up. Uh, those who are incarcerated may want to observe and practice during Ramadan. The thing about uh, faith is it's not monolithic. And just because you weren't practicing or weren't reading the laws before Ramadan doesn't mean that you can't start now. Um, and I apologize, namaz is the, or the word for prayer, and I might use that interchangeably. Um, we want you to be aware of your, of the rights of those who are incarcerated and also um, be confident that these rights are rooted in the law. I won't be talking a lot about the particulars of the law. They're there on the screen if you want to read them, but more so about uh, just the different pieces of religious observation that might come into play during Ramadan. Um, so some of the complaints that the office received has been about hijab, uh, not being allowed to pray, whether it's your five daily prayers, Juma or Tarawi, uh, which are the nightly prayers that happen during Ramadan, the extra. Um, they're called super obligatory in some religious circles, but basically extra prayers that some people do consider part of their faith. Uh, the thing about, like I said before, faith is not monolithic. And so you might find that you may believe a little bit differently than someone else, but you're also Muslim and you're entitled to your own particularly sincerely held religious beliefs. Um, generally, facilities are supposed to accommodate Muslims' requests for prayer, even for things like dates, uh, because they have significance, religious significance in the month of Ramadan, uh, meals for suhoor and iftar at those particular timings, uh, the allowance to pray Tarawi, and then of course for Eid Namaz. Um, we'll get into the specifics about meal accommodations. Those happen to be um, very particular aspects of the law that have been tried and tested, and there's particular language that comes along with uh, the understanding of what the meals need to entail, and we'll go a little bit over that. Um, and then of course I mentioned prayer. Uh, and then we can talk discuss a little bit about some of the success stories um, that we've had at CARE, and not only at the CARE SFBA office, but up and down California. So uh, for those of you who are not Muslim, uh, Ramadan is a month of the Islamic calendar. Interestingly enough, it's not one of the four what are considered holy religious months, but it is a month in which Muslims all over the world uh, observe their faith uh, outwardly, and other people take notice, right? Um, there are people who are fasting at school, at offices, and yes, indeed, in prisons and correctional facilities. Um, it, while it's common for Muslims to do things a little bit differently during Ramadan, again, religious beliefs, while they may be shared, when we're talking about the rights of those who are incarcerated, it's the sincerely held religious belief of the person, which may look a little bit different from everyone. Um, again, if you're Muslim, you know that fasting and reading thoroughly are considered pious acts and uh, people take great care not only to abstain from obviously food and drink, but also other things like swearing, smoking, drinking uh, gum, drinking water. 
a lot of people are very surprised to find out that even water is not allowed uh, for those who fast. Um, but those who are sick, elderly, uh, they don't, uh, they're excused from fasting. They pay a fidya and um, their fasting is excused. And fidya is a um, predetermined amount of money that you pay um, when you when you can't fast. Um, and there are other things that are related to payment for when you break a fast, but we won't be getting into that here. Um, and you can certainly look those things up online. Um, and again, for those of you who are not Muslim, fasting is uh, you wake up, you eat a meal before the dawn. Um, some people say it's up until the when you hear the adhan. Uh, which is the call to Fajr prayer in the morning. The Adhan is called to prayer, but in the morning it would be the Fajr prayer, the early morning prayer, pre-dawn prayer, um, that you um, you can eat. Uh, a lot of people take care to um, eat things that will help them go the distance during that day. So um, that's actually of particular importance to those who are incarcerated because whatever equivalent whatever equivalent of meals that they were getting throughout the day, they would want to get um, at the morning, sahur, before they start their fast, right? And then when they break their fast, iftar. Um, so we'll get into that language as we move through the presentation. Um, of course, um, Muslims, generally speaking, they don't eat pork or pork byproducts. And so the meals do have to accommodate that. Um, again, as I discussed, religious practice is not always the same. And so some people require that their meat is hand slaughtered. Again, the prisons or correctional facilities would need to um, facilitate that. Um, and like it says on the bottom, someone who knowingly, and that's really important word, knowingly, denies uh, a prisoner his religious diet is in violation of the First Amendment, um, freedom of religion and uh, is not entitled to qualified immunity. So qualified immunity is something that someone would use as a defense to, we don't ha have to give you that right. So that person, if they knowingly denied someone who's incarcerated, any of these accommodations that we've talked about, they would be in violation of the First Amendment. Um, and you know we're not the only community that fasts. So fasting is also undertaken by um, some Christian communities, uh, Jewish communities as well. So prisons are very familiar with fasting and what it entails. Um, although for Muslims, it looks a little bit different as we've discussed. Um, and let's see, um, and if it's of any use of knowledge, um, uh, so Jews observe fasting in the Jewish New Year, um, ending in Yom Kippur, and then, uh, and they also abstain from food and beverage, but also work and sexual relations, like um, Muslims also do that. And then also those who identify as a Roman Catholic or um, Christians, other types of Christians, they observe a period of fasting known as Lent, um, where they give up something. I had a friend in high school who gave up um, candy for Lent one year. So um, again, prisons aren't familiar with this. This shouldn't be new to them. Um, but if you are, uh, requesting an accommodation on behalf of a family member, it may be um, wise for you to also know some of the other observations so that way uh, you can buttress a claim if you have one, right? Um, so Ramadan meal service, uh, these are some of the laws that uh, support the basis for someone requesting what's called like a Ramadan meal service. And essentially what makes it a Ramadan meal service is that it's just being offered at it. Food is being offered at a non-usual time in the schedule, right? For Suhoor or for Iftar. And um, obviously Muslims have made requests for halal meals throughout the year, not just in Ramadan. And those have been satisfied. And um, there's a note at the bottom about um, administrative need for like signups and things like that. And at the end of the day, what you have to know is, is that is the prison can you, or the correctional facility can use what's at their disposal to help them organize. Right. But it can't be like a sign up sheet 
from six months ago or five months uh, before Ramadan even starts, right? But sign-up sheets may be a part of how they organize this. And so what we are hoping is, is that community members and their family members who are incarcerated or if they're your friends, um, you can support those who are incarcerated by understanding that um, they do have to work with the prison in order to get these rights, right? But it can't be anything that is um, burdensome, something that really doesn't help um, facilitate this, but in actuality is used as a means to prevent people from getting the accommodation that they desire. Um, and something that the presenters of this Know Your Rights uh, webinar wanted to make sure that those who are watching understand is that um, it's an incarcerated right to practice his or her religion, and that's secured by the US Constitution. So it's ingrained in the federal law, it's ingrained in this thing called the Religious Land Use and Institute, Institutionalized Persons Act, RLU um, AIPA. And these uh, rights have also been codified in California state law and facility policies. Um, there are definitely a lot of different citations throughout the presentation that support this. Um, let's go forward. And um, in, in terms of fasting, we've already been through this, right? And there's a lot of language in this presentation that is must and should. And this is just to make you aware of what are your rights. However, in working with the prisoners or uh, the uh, facilities, perhaps there's a Muslim chaplain on board, um, we definitely would want to soften the language, right? Um, of course, these are your rights, but the way that we go about them uh, and achieving them um, is different from how they're showing up on this presentation. And so we would absolutely be honored to help anyone with a request uh, should they need it. We've done these before, we've been successful before, and should you have a family member or friend who needs us to make a request on their behalf because they're not getting these things, they're not getting um, time to pray or um, dates or uh, iftar or suhoor or you know any of it, or some of it or none of it, um, we are here to help. Um, please, please go to our website and uh, please report anything that you see that is does not align with what we're presenting today. Um, and at the end of the day, what we want everyone to understand is that um, refusing these pieces, in essence, are refusing big practices of Ramadan and it's against the law and it shouldn't be done. And so if you're aware that a prisoner is not getting these rights, please talk to us, we'd love to help. Um, so, um, this is all right here. Um, I, I think it would be a disservice for me to just read this off the slide. And I, and I have mentioned this, um, the one piece that I haven't talked about is that there may be some, uh, there may be those who are incarcerated who also have another, um, medical condition that requires them to, um, have a particular kind of meal and that also should be taken care of by the facility. And, uh, in addition to that, there may be some Muslims who, because of their health or because of their age, are not going to fast. And that shouldn't impact another person, another incarcerated person's um, ability to fast or to um, participate in what they feel are meaningful activities during Ramadan in, uh, in conjunction with their own sincerely held religious beliefs. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, uh, Yes, Islam is um, practiced by billions of um, people, uh, but at the same time, everyone's practice looks a little bit different. And just because someone is doing something differently doesn't mean that another person has to do it the same way as them. And so the prisoners, and the person who's incarcerated, their particular health, uh, their um, allergies, their own ideas of what the fasting means to them, when it should be broken, when it should be done, those need to be taken into consideration. 
Um, but as you see on the slide, there should be a conversation about this. There should be knowledge about this. And that ultimately, this shouldn't be a bar to getting your accommodation request satisfied. Um, let's see. I like mentioned illnesses. Um, again, the individual sincerely held religious beliefs. They're in charge of that, right? So it's up to the individual person if they want to fast or not, if they want to read thoroughly or not, if they want to um, participate in these activities or not. This is um, not a, everyone has to do it the same way. And uh, prisons and even facilities like schools and different things, everyone needs to be aware of that. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I think what's most surprising for community members to know when we do presentations like this is that things like dates are part of, you know, the religious significance of the month of Ramadan and prisoners should have access to them. Things like Eid Namaz, congressional prayers. And this is like in addition to Juma prayers, right? These are things that should be accommodated. So um, if you are, if you know someone who's, again, who's who wants these rights and are not getting them, please contact us. We'd love to help. Um, we'd love to help anyone who wants these accommodations. And especially during Ramadan coming up, this is very important. Um, and COVID restrictions, uh, some of them are easing up now. And so I don't know if this will be a particular concern, um, but of course, any restrictions that are in place so that COVID doesn't spread, those need to be um, narrowly tailored um, and Muslims shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that Muslims are disfavored of other, other religious groups. Actually, like I mentioned before, many religious groups during this time will also be fasting. And so um, it's a clue to us if a particular faith is being accommodated, but Muslims are not, right? And so it's all things to mention to us if, should you have a problem. Um, We've, again, I've mentioned that we've sent out letters to all the different correctional facilities and prisons, um, making them aware of dates of Ramadan for this year. And so um, they all do have that knowledge at their hands. Um, and hopefully no one should have problems getting accommodations this year. Um, and again, I've mentioned that this is not just for Ramadan, this is for the whole year. So, um, so. Um, we've talked about this as well. Dates are part of religious significance. Um, and if the correctional facility has a Muslim chaplain, that, that is amazing. And they definitely should be coordinating um, with them to help provide an opportunity for prayer and um, a holiday meal for Eid. Um, we hope that, you know, our incarcerated brothers and sisters, of course, our prayers are with them. And we hope that um, their Ramadan is aren't just as successful as ours. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, Care California, which means the offices in San Diego, LA, San Francisco Bay Area, and then Sacramento and the Valley, um, they've all have been requesting prisoner accommodations for years and have been granted. We've even There have even been some lawsuits um, that have been successful. And so, uh, again, we encourage anyone who needs help with these particular issues, please do reach out to us. Um, we're so happy to help and we want to make sure that every incarcerated um, Muslim brother and sister has a very successful event. And that's it. And since there's no one here, I don't think there's gonna be any questions and answers, um, but I'm hoping to just, um, if it's okay, uh, just do a little dua. Um, since we're so close to Ramadan. Um, and it's just a prayer um, that we're asking God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that we may, you know, uh, reach Ramadan. So um, I'm just going to read it off my phone. Allahumma um, bilana. <laughs> Ramadan. So, um, oh, Allah, let us reach Ramadan. A really simple dua. And um, I hope that this information has been useful. Um, and again, we really encourage anyone who has incarcerated family members or friends who are concerned that 
um, their friend or family member is not receiving any of these accommodations, uh, of course, this presentation is here. You have all the rights. We'd be happy to help uh, in any way that we can. Um, and with that, uh, our civil rights team is actually uh, Niti Manelli, who is the legal services coordinator, Brad Sood, who's our paralegal for both, and Niti Manelli is also our uh, legal services coordinator for both our civil rights and immigration rights team. And um, so is Riyad Sood, and then Jeffrey Wing is our civil rights attorney. So they would be happy to help uh, in any of the reasonable accommodation requests that you would like to make. Um, thank you so much for spending some time with me and I really appreciate your patience. And that's the end of the presentation. So thank you so much. <laughs>